I'm Renee Berna, and this is Broadway Quarantined. The show must go on. I have uh, a very special guest coming up next. Her name is Julie Foldesai, uh, one of my best friends from a long time, uh, who I also met on the Little Women Tour. And I'm really excited to talk to her. We do get to Skype once in a while or FaceTime, but um, it's been a while. So here we go. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> How's it going, Folded? Our first Zoom meeting. I love it. I love it. It feels so legitimate. <laughs> Gosh, your hair is so long. That's what Autumn said. She's like, your hair is so long, but I love it. I just, you know, I, I just never cut it. <laughs> I guess that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, because I, you know, it's just like, what's the, it, that's, if you have a shorter hairdo, you know, you're having to go all the time to get it cut. Or like, what I like to do is just put all my hair up and I, I just cut it like this. Seriously? Yeah, I just cut, I cut everyone's hair here. I cut the dog's hair. Kids. Well, I knew people cut their kids' hair like that. Like put it in a ponytail and then snip it and it falls kind of layeredy and nice. Yeah. I so, do it for me why too. Why work for grownups? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm gonna have Mike. Mike, uh, he wants me to cut his hair later today. Oh, so. that's brave. <laughs> I'm not cutting my hair. He, I don't know if he knows what he's asking. <laughs> well, not to be cutting Michael's hair. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I trim my hair between cuts, and I think he asked me to do it for him once, but then he shook it out. I will. I will want to clear up that you and I are both married to Michael's. Oh, right. So if we're, if we're talking about the, you call your Michael, Michael, and I call my Michael, Mike. So that's how the audience can differentiate. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll do my little intro for, for those of the interwebs that don't know you. You are Julie Foldesai and you're a star of, of stage and screen. You've been in so many Broadway shows. So, you know, I do a little like cyber stalking before I do these interviews. And I was looking at like the Broadway shows just stacked up under your name. And I'm like, this is, I always forget how many you've done. Thanks. I mean, you did Sunday in the Park with George. You did Little Women on Broadway. You did Newsies, South Pacific, um, The Full Monty, which I for totally forgot about. Am I missing one or did I name them all? Let's see. There's five. There, I, I think I got them. And then we met on tour of Little Women because you came right. out to play Joe March um, halfway through, I don't know, someone was having, but you were you were our, our Joe March for a long time. And then we- uh, I was just remembering our first hurrah. <laughs> I know, I know, it was so crazy. You and I, we, I knew, I knew people were talking about you. They're like, this, this, this woman, you know, is going to come out. I don't know if we were probably saying girl back then, but Julie Foldesai, and you're going to love her, Renee. Like she's the, it must've been Gwen or some, someone who knew you from something else. Oh, you're going to just love her. And I'm like, okay. You know, and we, I think we had even been maybe even performing together already, but I was going out for a run or you were going for a run. I don't know what we were getting out of the place. And then exactly okay because I, I think it was i think i joined in a city in florida maybe tampa in midweek okay it was our second city birmingham, birmingham alabama, alabama. <laughs> and the day we flew there i was on my way i didn't really know anybody but i loved was it five points that area in birmingham is that what it's called anyway that cute area of town with the shops and the restaurants and it was what like two or three miles away uh -huh. And so I was headed there with my purse <laughs> and you were maybe going on a jog or something, but you didn't have your wallet. This is why it, I remember because we went in the afternoon, right? Oh yeah. I mean, it must've been like one o'clock. <laughs> it was our, it was like a 14 hour first date. Right. And um, <laughs> if you had been a guy, we would have been married like, Two weeks after that. <laughs> We're, married. We're married friends. We are. Yeah. It, when we got home, I think that the, like the second bar we ended up at, the, we closed down the bar and the guy who was the, mus the musician playing guitar that night drove us home. Yes. It must have been like, 
at least it, past midnight. Well, it was crazy because it was a place with all the food and the wine pairings. That's and so, so every food had a wine pairing and then all the way to the end. And we must have read, I don't know what the bill was. I think you owed me $80 the next day. <laughs> Which now it doesn't seem like that bad, but at the time, for me to spend almost a hundred dollars on an evening. Oh yeah, when you're in your twenties, it's like, oh yeah, that's a big deal. That was great. It was just one of those things where I was like, you only live once, you know. Like it didn't even matter. I mean, we just we were having so much fun, and then that was it. It was like friends forever. I, I and then we became roommates in New York, and I, I yeah, just from that one fateful. It really was. That was what set it up. Yeah, it's funny. And I, I was just um, thinking how, like, my closest relationships in my life have been like that, like instant. Yeah. You know, it's a good spirit when you meet one. And you're, and you're someone who, you're, you're, very, you're very popular. You're very loved by many people. No, you are. You're loved by, yeah. you are. You're loved by many people. And so sometimes you can be hard to get a hold of. And I remember, not now for me, but I remember at the time I was like, you are going to be my friend. <laughs> I am good at staying in touch with people and I am going to like make sure you are my friend. And then when we were in New York together, it's very easy, but you know, like, you know, you're traveling and stuff and it's tough. That's amazing. So I always felt really lucky that I, I like, I feel like I whittled my way into your life. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for doing that. And now you're the... It, you're also just this um, inc incredible songwriter. So place yourself closer. Don't take too long. Operate the rhythm. Move it along. I know you will. I know you will. Cause it's too strong. And you have multiple CDs. And you just wrote, um, you just wrote all the music for that. Hallmark movie in the Key of Love. So that was um, we, it, it premiered in June, and it was supposed to premiere on TV, and then they decided to put it on their streaming channel last minute. Um, and they said they wanted to boost the streaming population, mm -hmm. and so it's been on there for a while. And then the they decided to premiere it on the the channel last night. So oh, fun. really? It was last night? Yeah. And I had, I was like, I mean, I'd seen it a couple times, but Michael and I watched it in real time and I was just giddy. It was so fun to just, you know, watch it with commercials. I mean, not that because people don't do that anymore, but I, you know, just knowing that there were, you know, thousands of people that don't know me in their living rooms tuning in or, you know, don't know the movie just because it was on TV and they like the Hallmark Channel. It makes it super special so it's so awesome because I, re I remember sitting with you a long time ago and and you were talking about that writing for film writing for tv you know and it just seemed very like your your music's actually helped me through some bad breakups where I was I like I'd be running and I'm just like listening to Julie Fold it's like part that your cd part uh, it's part of t part of town is that what this part of town. Part of town. And so I would just listen to those songs like over and over. I really would. I'm sure I've told you this before, but I mean, I would listen over and over and I'm like, yeah, you don't need that guy. <laughs> Julie Foldeside gives me strength. Where the Road is particularly good at that. <laughs> yes. Yes. I forgot until last night as I was watching the movie, we had originally thought about putting For the Road in the movie and the... I mean, I co-created the story, all the scenes and characters and everything, but the actual script writer, um, he put in the script when they were trying to figure out what song to play. It was like, should we do For the Road? And I was like, oh, that song made a title appearance. Yes, that's awesome. Oh, so is it in the movie? No, because they chose Feel the Earth instead. Oh. Feel the Earth and Still So In Love and I Belong In Your Arms. And I wrote a new song for the show. And uh-oh. I've, I've got to see this movie. Yeah. I can't believe I haven't seen it. I think it's just because I, I don't know how to get a hold of it. Gotcha. Well, I think once they air it, I do think they kind of start to, I feel like confident that they'll re-air it. 
Okay. And put it, I could probably watch it on their channel or something. Yeah. Their AMC channel. Anyway, I mean, not to, not to overplug it. I'm just, I'm excited because I, I can't, and it's got all your songs. Like that's going to feel so weird to like, li just be hearing these songs that I've been. It was trending on Twitter last night. No kidding. <laughs> so we're hoping we'll make a sequel. Plug, plug. I love it. I feel like I've got the hot commodity here sitting with me. <laughs> People are going to start watching my, uh, watching my videos just because I had you on. <laughs> well, how are you guys holding up? You know, we're doing great, actually. Um, I, I, on the, I've been thinking a lot about, you know that movie, Life is Beautiful? Yes. Which has always been one of my favorite movies. Me too. And not to compare the coronavirus to the atrocity of the Holocaust, but just the um, the sentiment that you can create, you know, the story that you want for your young children when something like this is happening, and being forced to keep things positive and keep things moving and and come up with fun things to do. It's like you know, as exhausting as it is, it is a gift as well, you know, to me as yeah. well. So, um, you know, some days are better than others. How, how about you guys? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I finally did the, uh, the sensory bin, like uh, whip up the bubbles and put food dye in them for the kids to play with. And you know, it didn't last as, they loved it, but I mean, it lasts about 15 minutes, which, which means a little more work to fun right. ratio than I would have liked. But, um, you know, but that kind of stuff, like what you're saying, it's, and, and I do, I've been telling my kids, um, we've just been like, oh, special rules. You know, like you can't go next to that person. It's special rules. I like it. And, and yeah, you just can't over talk about it or anything. You just kind of have to say, okay, this is just what it is. And it's, it's just for now. And yeah. And, and maybe I'm lucky that Kaylee's five because she can understand. Um, I was talking to one friend who has a two-year-old and she was saying he just can't understand why he can't go to the playground. So he just keeps asking because he doesn't understand, you know, there's no way he can understand it, I guess. So yeah. Wait. Two and four. What does that say? Is he two? Okay. Yeah, two and four. So they're, um, well, we're lucky because we have, I, I'm saying this, I feel like in every video, but we do have the yard and I, that makes a big deal, a big difference to have a path of grass to like run them around on. And, um, but they're sad that they can't see their friends and they're sort of like the mayors of town. They just wave to everyone who walks by and, you know, like, hi, and new kids. It's like, what's your name? So it's, uh, you know, but they're, they're, uh, they, they have each other and it's, it's, you know, so they're fighting a lot more too, cause they're always around each other, but they're, I feel like, I feel like we're, we're all doing pretty well Good. for now, but I mean, it really has only been a week. Oh yeah. And two days ago, I think was my worst day. And yeah, I just know that they'll happen. The, the bad days are going to happen. Well, yeah, and you have the days, like right now I feel so, I, I feel so fresh because I'm, they're not around me right now, <laughs> but like I'll have the days where I'm, I'm just losing my patience, I mean, so losing my patience, like yelling more than I want to, um, and just, I mean, I've had to like go lock myself in a room and just be like, I just need a minute to Last breathe. I just left, I was like, Michael, I gotta go for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> It's amazing how it doesn't take long. It takes like a just a moment to go and just. Well, oh, I thought you meant it doesn't take long to flip the switch. That's from true. You were handling it just fine to you weren't. The moment that got me last night is I was making dinner, I burned the sweet potato fries. <laughs> That's just it. I was like, I can't make another batch of sweet potato fries. <laughs> my my child is picky, so. Ugh. I know. Yeah, I got clocked in the, uh, uh-oh. You go on. <laughs> Someone take this kid. <laughs> okay, my, my, uh, my point was getting when he, I think I told you this, but he clocked me in the face with this little piano that Mike has. He, he was sitting next to me and he just like, 
I don't even think he knew what he was doing, you know, but you just quack right in the eye. I mean, I had a swollen eye. Oh like God. it was starting to get black. And I had one of those moments where I, I immediately started crying, like you do when you get hit in the face. Yeah, yeah. And I and he started laughing. And I ran to my as a two-year-old would, I ran <laughs> to my room and just shut the door. I'm like, I just need to, I just have to get out of here because this is I'm so mad and there's nothing I can do. You know, it's like he didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> that out too because <laughs> I was kidding yeah, I know no I know I know yeah that's what you feel like and so you know that you need to and then you harness it <laughs> <laughs> but um are you guys are you having any weird like like stuff you can't get or is it has it calmed down around you it's cal yeah I went to the I heard from a friend that it's restocked Trader Joe's so I went um, and it was fully stocked. Um, I imagine they're doing this at all the Trader Joe's, but they had a sign that said, we're all in this together. Don't take more than two of anything and um, limit yourself to one basket or a cart or something. And um, wow. anyway, and people kind of kept their distance and I filled, filled my cart and took off. And then I, um, yeah, the only thing they didn't have is toilet paper and paper towels. I think that, yeah took all that stuff so. i know i know i i they didn't even have empty shelves they didn't even re like there was no restock so like we're never gonna bother anymore you know i think i got lucky because you i feel like <laughs> you know, I, I don't know i'm just like get a bidet or something people <laughs> yeah because <laughs> the the earth's water supply is so endless well that too that too yeah i know i'm always thinking like when I go into the public restrooms, is it better to use the paper towel? Like if there's a paper towel machine and an electronic drying machine, which is better? Which resource do you want to deplete? I know. It's probably that. <laughs> of course, it's the <laughs> Carry your own hand towel. That would be. Yeah. Yes, you should carry your own hand towel. Take that out. <laughs> Well, you know, I did, uh, I also, I did cloth diapers for four years. So I'm like, you know, if, if it, if it all goes down, I always have cloth wipes and I know it's gross to the general public, but for me, it's like when you do cloth diapers that long, like just bathroom stuff in general, because like nothing is, nothing grosses me out anymore. I mean, it's still a little bit grosses me out, but it's like. But nothing can be washed and reused. Right? Yeah. 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 I get that. You know? Um, well, that's good. I'm glad that they're, I'm glad they're restocking. And are you, are you writing a lot or are you pretty much just taking care, like just mom, mom duty full time? Like, are you mostly, getting any time to yourself? I'm mostly on mom duty. Um, but I am making myself write every day. I've recently got, this would be like a, a free plug for this. I can't, I don't know if you can see it. It'll be backwards, right? The one thing planner. Planner. Oh, cool. The one thing. Uh uh. Well, it's it's um, figuring out what your one thing is that if you and it, you know, obviously it can change, but that if you do that every day, you know, you'll feel good about. It's like you you figure it out based on where do you want to be someday. And then where do you want to be in five years and in one year? And then, so what do you need to do in order to, and it can be personal or um, business related. And then you just, so like in March, you put your one thing at the top on oh, that little okay. line. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm just getting started. But anyway, I was basically like, write is my one thing. So if I get an hour, cause I have three musicals I'm writing on, working on, um two with collaborators and one on my own so i'm just i do like if i don't get it done before she goes down to bed at night i just do it after bedtime which is hard is hard but once i get to writing once you start doing something that you love then you know it gives you energy and the juices start flowing so i just make myself open my computer and <laughs> yeah so would i love to have endless time to write a great novel Three brilliant musicals, a bunch of great songs. Read for many Hallmark movies. Yes. 
I know. I know. Yeah. Well, it is, it is, I mean, I, with anything, I feel like it, even if it ends up being a super enjoyable activity, it's just getting, getting to the start, the start line. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to do, I mean, I can't believe I've been tossing around all these ideas, projects for like two years. And this is the first one that I'm, I'm, I'm not the first one. I mean, I've done little things, but really where I'm like, no, I'm going to do this. And, and, you know, I'm going to get, I think it helps because other people are involved and you talk about that. Like, like collaboration is mm-hmm. one of the best. I mean, I think you find it really enjoyable, right? Oh yeah. I like, I think it's also, um, you know, I don't know what, it depends on who you are, but if you find that you enjoy the process of doing something, then you're probably doing the right thing. And I do, I just love collaborating. It's so fun. And I didn't do it for a long time. I was solo writing my songs and, but I'm working on this musical about parenting with my friend Stacy and she's just so hilarious. And we, we come up with, you know, we give ourselves these um, motivators, like a deadline to, apply to a writing retreat or we were supposed to have a presentation of our musical. This group in Westport was going to produce a script in hand presentation of our show for Mother's Day. And um, it's probably not going to happen, but um, well, it gets the show written. So it's awesome. I'd love to do more stuff about parenting, but I feel like, although I, I am a, (laughs) <laughs> how do I put this? Like I'm a, I, I, I vacillate between being like a really positive, you know, I mean, I think I'm a good parent and, a, you know, positive parent, but I have like, I've got like, I have the dark side too, you know, I mean, I've got the, like, just the, like part of, part of this, the safety at home and like the being on lockdown thing it, to me, I'm like, this, this feels eerily similar to having a newborn in the house. Yes, you're on lockdown. Yeah, it does feel similar to being the stay-at-home parent when there's a newborn in the house. Absolutely. Like, the only thing that maybe you get done is going to the grocery store and that. Or the bathroom. Or the bathroom. <laughs> Even then you have a child on your lap. <laughs> yeah, you're like, you don't care about toilet paper at that point. <laughs> But you know how much I love having newborns. Like, <laughs> it's not, that wasn't my favorite part. <laughs> Me either. I mean, you know, if we're picking favorite parts, I feel like I have to sh- share this chair right now because I love it so much. What is so, it? These move. So oh. if you're a car player, you know, uh uh-uh, uh. Yeah. Move out of the way. Oh, yes. the Isn't that awesome? I love that. I gotta get the home goods. <gasps> I love it. Are you going to sing us um, one of your songs when you sing us a song? Because I don't want to sing a Broadway tune without an accompanist. <laughs> oh, I did mine to a karaoke track. <laughs> I do have my old track for Astonishing because I did all the press for Sutton Foster, remember? Oh my God. Um, Maybe you have to do both. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to want to drag out Astonishing, but... I don't know if this can drag out astonishing. I'm well, sure it can. <laughs> I just want to, I want to hear one of you. I, I think if you sing one of your own songs, that would be, that would be the best. All right. That's a, uh, and you know, now it's like you're writing musicals too. So it's, it's good to, for people to hear what they're going to be auditioning with in the near future. That's right. Mm-hmm. I'm always calling into my um, Catherine O'Hare voice from Shit's Creek. Watch. Are you watching? Did we talk about this? I don't think so. <gasps> I, oh my God, she is so brilliant. She just makes it. I mean, I love Eugene Levy too, and I love the whole cast, but I mean, she just slays me with her, like, <laughs> it's fruit wine. What's not to like? <laughs> she, I was just watching an episode, I think it's in season three, where they go to buy a car. And she flips into this like Cockney accent. And I mean, it is That's so. Right. That's right. It is so. She's like, oh, me twin sister and I were. <laughs> oh, and my favorite, I don't know if you've gotten to this, is speaking of her voice, 
is there that episode where somebody goes to the hotel and she's in the lobby and they say and he says later some woman with an unidentifiable accent was at the front i don't know if unidentifiable was the word that they used but it was something like that because she of course completely made it up <laughs> it's so brilliant i mean i i wasn't i did one i tried to watch it and I couldn't, I didn't like it at first. And then my mom actually got into it and she said, and I mean, everyone's been telling me, you're, Renee, you would love this. Like, I can't believe you're not watching it. And my mom was like, no, come on, just, just sit down. We were visiting her and she's like, just sit down, watch an episode with me, you know? And she's just dying laughing. And, and then I just couldn't stop binge watching it. It's like, and I love those things that where they're 20 minutes long. Cause it's yeah. something you just say, I can commit 20 minutes and then go to bed or whatever. And it's funny and it's light. Yeah, it's good for these times. That's probably why I've watched the Office uh, series like three times through the whole way. Because you need a little laughter in your life. And yeah. just 20 minutes, you know, just. Yeah, yeah. Just easy. Like, I can't watch the news uh, too long before going to bed. Oh, me too. Yeah. So I dream about it all night. Mm hmm Oh, gosh. Well, um, I'm excited to get your, I'm excited to get your song and, um, I'm going to, I'm going to end the, I'm going to end the recorded version of our, our talk, but I was going to keep talking to you for a minute. Okay. I love <laughs> that's that. Okay. But thank you for joining us and thank you for, for gracing us with your beautiful, uh, presence. I'm just so excited that you are going to, are you, you're doing this for us and that you're going to sing for us. That's awesome. I'm excited too. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you later. As All in, right. I'm going to talk to you another, uh, however long you'll let me, but I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>